the turn of the 20th century, work began on a unique navigational structure, the only one of its kind in North America, the St. Andrews Lock and Dam. In fact, there's only one other structure like it in the world. St. Andrews Lock and Dam is located on the Red River at Lockport, Manitoba, 27 kilometers north of Winnipeg. It's referred to as a Khmer-style dam, after the designer who built the original dam on the Seine River in France. The Khmer Dam is well suited to the Red River. Its unique design regulates water levels during the range of flows throughout the summer navigation season. Without it, there would be very limited navigation on the Red River between the city of Winnipeg and Lake Winnipeg. In the late 1800s, the Red River was the main transportation corridor from the United States. St. Andrew's Lock and Dam was originally built to flood nearby Lister Rapids to a depth of nine feet. This allowed the passage of larger commercial vessels. The structure was completed in 1910. Sir Wilfrid Laurier presided over the grand opening ceremony. It drew dignitaries, townsfolk, and Aboriginal peoples from a wide area. Riverbanks, boats, and barges were filled to overflowing. The bystanders came to witness such a momentous occasion. The bridge over the dam was first built in 1914. The original roadway had a timber deck. There was a bascule or lift span to accommodate large vessels passing beneath it through the lock. By the Second World War, vehicle traffic had increased. Eventually, the timber roadway was paved with concrete and asphalt. In 1950, the west approach was rebuilt, and the link was made to Highway 44. Now, about 5,000 vehicles cross the bridge daily. The bascule span was replaced by a new through truss as part of the bridge reconstruction. The dam itself has two parts, a fixed concrete sill with a movable frame section, with 89 steel frames and huge wooden curtains. Then there's the lock, which raises and lowers boats from one side of the dam to the other. In 1915, a fish ladder was added. For centuries, the site has been a rich storehouse of pickerel, catfish, and sturgeon, attracting anglers all year long. The Aboriginal name for the area is Kinusawan, a place of many fish. Archaeological digs on the east bank have uncovered a fishing and farming site that dates back to the 1400s. The ingestible Khmer style of dam was chosen for the Lockport site because of the extremely variable flows on the Red River. Despite the changing flows, the dam maintains a relatively consistent water level over Lister Rapids from May to mid-October. That's not an easy task, considering the drainage area of the Red River covers nearly 100,000 square miles. It extends into the United States and to the Saskatchewan-Alberta border. The fixed portion of the dam itself is made of eight concrete piers founded on limestone bedrock. The piers are over 15 meters high. The piers carry steel trusses that suspend the movable dam, hold the operating machinery, and support the bridge. A concrete sill joints the piers at the bottom. The sill is over 11 meters wide and 6 meters high. It serves as the stop for the swing of the movable dam. The movable dam has six spans made up of 15 frames each. Every frame has a hinged wooden curtain that can be rolled up and down like a blind. Once the frames are installed in the spring, debris must be continually cleared from the upstream side of the dam. This job is often difficult because debris funnels into the site from across the vast drainage area. It takes two days to install the 89 frames. A work crew and special winches lower each frame into place. Once the frames are locked together, they form a track for the winches that lower the curtains. The wood curtains are the truly unique feature of the dam. Each curtain is over 13 feet high 
and more than 7 feet wide. They're made up of 50 individually sized Douglas fir laths, and they're connected by specially made brass hinges and pins. The curtains can be raised or lowered within a few inches to regulate the river flow. Usually the middle spans are used for this purpose. If a great surge of water is expected, entire frames and curtains can be removed to accommodate it. However, raising the dam lowers the water level on the upstream side, which cuts off access to the lock. Starting in mid-October, the dam is taken out. The curtain cranes are spotted on the track to roll up the curtains. If for some reason a curtain can't be raised, it's left on the frame to be removed later. The frame cranes are brought out of storage and placed on the center deck. One by one, the frames are raised into their winter positions. The superintendent has to act quickly if it looks like there's going to be an early freeze-up. The curtains and frames can't be raised without substantial damage if they're caught in river ice. Each fall, broken laths are removed from the curtains. Their pins and hinges are salvaged and new laths are installed. Over the winter months, seven entirely new curtains are made. The original dies from 1910 are still used to size the laths within a fraction of an inch. Each lath varies in width from the top of the curtain to the bottom. First, the individual laths are cut. Then they are grooved and notched for the hinges. To lengthen the lifespan of the wood, the laths are painted. It takes two weeks to cut the curtains and three days for full assembly. The brass pins and hinges must bind the lath securely, but allow enough freedom of movement to roll the curtains easily. Materials other than Douglas fir have been considered, but only wood swells up in water to provide an excellent seal. In dry years, the laths are chinked with wood chips and flax straw to create an even tighter seal. The materials may be basic, but they work with unparalleled precision. The lock is capable of raising vessels 4.3 meters. It's 65 meters long, 14 meters wide, and 11 meters deep. At each end, there are two gates made of Douglas fir. The dry weight of the upstream gates is 38 tons. The downstream gates weigh 65 tons. The lock is filled and drained through a pair of cast iron valves at each end. Gravity is used to fill and drain the lock through eight portals on the side. It takes about 20 minutes to lock a boat from one side of the dam to the other. The lock operators are electrical and mechanical. Below ground gear components and cast boxes were removed in 1987 for inspection. They were in almost perfect condition after 77 years of use. The components were reinstalled with just a thorough cleaning. The lock operates 16 hours a day, seven days a week, from about June 1st to mid-October. About 1,500 vessels and 15,000 passengers are locked through during navigation season. Every four years, the lock is completely pumped out in the winter, and the valves are serviced. St. Andrew's Lock and Dam is a highly unique structure that, after 84 years, is still serving its purpose exceedingly well. The facility accommodates navigation. It also maintains the appeal of the natural surroundings. It's interesting to note how the use of the river has changed since the construction of the dam. In the past, commercial traffic dominated. Now the river is used primarily for recreation. The relatively constant summer water level has created new opportunities for enjoying the Red River as far south as Winnipeg. The navigational needs of the area may have changed over the past 80 years, but the ability of St. Andrew's Lock and Dam to accommodate those needs hasn't. It's an important navigational structure with historical significance. In 1990, a plaque was unveiled on behalf of the Engineering Institute of Canada, designating the structure as a National Engineering Historic Site. It has also been recognized as a National Historic Site by the federal government 